The nation's heart swells with pride whenever the Indian Space Research Organization, or ISRO, is mentioned. It's not just about the Mars orbit mission, but it's about a lot of other contributions that essentially go to improving lives of common people like you and me. And for that, uh, ISRO has just received the Gandhi Peace Prize as well, and we have the pleasure of having the Department of Space Secretary and ISRO Chairman joining us, AS Kiran Kumar. So welcome to the show. Congratulations for receiving the honor. What does it really mean to you to be placed in the same league as individuals like Nelson Mandela? Uh, does that uh, connote both an honor and a responsibility as well? No, definitely it's a great recognition of an organization which got initiated with primarily with the objective of bringing in the newer technology of space technology for addressing the specific problems and of the country. And people like Vikram Sarabhai, when they started this, they dreamed of uh, bringing in the space technology for the country's benefit. The points they had in mind, the ideas they had, have all been actually greatly recognized by today's uh, this Gandhi Peace Prize, which has been given. Because ISRO definitely cherishes its work because it is dedicated to bringing in the new technology of space through which communication, remote sensing, earth mm -hmm. observation, and practically all aspects of uh, life in the country has been touched by different activities of ISRO. And for us, this recognition by the government of India is really a redeeming one because it recognizes the work that uh, ISRO has done over the last uh, four decades in bringing in a very new technology. So you mentioned the last uh, four decades because uh, people know about the Mars Orbiter mission, but uh, just tell us about, uh, you know, if you could tell us five biggest achievements of ISRO in the, the last four decades, which really speak to this purpose uh, that ISRO has been uh, defined, uh, that uh, you help improve the lives of common people. Yeah, I think uh, the very first program which was started way back in 1975 was what is called a SITE, Satellite Instructional Television Experiment. It was this experiment which was a path-breaking experiment conducted anywhere in the world where in about 2,400 odd villages of India, today's equivalent of direct to home was attempted at that point of time way back in 75. You may recall that at that time hardly any place in the country had direct means television services available mm -hmm. probably the four metros were there at that point of time it was demonstrated to the country that you can reach out to the villagers and then communicate to them the requirements of uh, the village health education and also farming practices so this was the first experiment that was conducted which was a forerunner for our insat series of satellites and also the meteorological satellites mm -hmm. which were done the two major things was from that time gradually the outreach of the government to the public and right. public access for broadcasting yes. reached 100%. And in the present and in the future, because we just had a national meet uh, where uh, space technology could be used in improving governance and uh, development as well, uh, ISRO needs to act as a catalyst for development for the country. Could you tell us about, uh, in practical terms, what can people look to having uh, in the near future in terms of uh, what will improve their lives. Uh, we've heard about improved railway safety, we've heard about uh, better transport facilities, more eco-friendly transport facilities. Yeah, just before that, I also would like to touch upon a couple of issues uh, before that. See, the space observation capabilities that was established was able to demonstrate to the country how this new technology can bring in benefits. One of them is the fishermen. Mm -hmm. For example, using the space technology, the fishermen are being told fr from 1999, in fact, that where to look for fishing and yes. then which solve significant amount of uh, fuel problem and also the time required for them to re go to the place and then pick up uh, the fish catch. Then similarly in terms of the water availability on the ground, groundwater, bore well drilling, what was earlier probably less than 50% success rate mm -hmm. based on the space technology information. People were provided information about where to look for drilling the wells. Yes. So this, and then in terms of crop information, crop mm -hmm. yield assessment, and the urban development and planning. So a host of activities were being done. And okay. today, for example, what uh, with the virtue of our Earth Observation Satellite System and also the Gagan. Yes. Gagan is a way by which safety of life assured positioning information is made accessible. 
using this and also the latest uh, technology of uh, communication, crowdsourcing and accessing to the geospatial portals of Bhuvan. The kind of applications that are being worked out are enormous and like you mentioned, one of them is with the railway safety finding a way of uh, making sure that the unmanned level crossings mm -hmm. are uh, brought to focus and the engine driver gets well in advance the information about that and then avoiding accidents that could occur in those places and also the railways making use of the complete information in a big way in their own planning and then tracking the tra both the the uh, passenger traffic as well as the luggage and the so would you say that uh for space technology uh, to adapt it to the use of the government, the possibilities are endless. Uh, even in government's flagship programs like Namami Gange, Digital India, Swachh Bharat, uh, it'll be of tremendous use. Yeah, definitely. One of the key things is the what the space technology is able to do is it's able to give a overarching picture of the things. See whether you are, when you are looking for a planning, at, let's say, in terms of communication traffic, or whether you are planning road transport, the new corridors that are being planned for, let's say, Bombay-Delhi corridor, this kind of uh, planning. The information about the digital elevation model mm -hmm. of the country and also the environmental conditions mm -hmm. and the way certain water bodies can be harvested for various activities, including, for example, for tribal fishing, fishing ponds and then, so the, it's endless and it's only l the imagination of the people who are going to use that's going to limit the activity. In fact, it is in this context you should recall what Prime Minister says about uh, how the younger generation and the newer generation can make use of this information base and coming up with innovative solutions. The possibilities are tremendous and endless. Even in internet connectivity? Yeah, even in terms of the, through the connectivity, for example, now we'll be working on how to bring in broadband connectivity through yes. space technology using the newer methods of uh, communication systems. So the actually the kind of work that can be done is endless, but mm. what will remain a issue will be our ability to actually build the capacity within the country for increasing the number of tr launches that we are going and to make. And what ISRO is uh, or can offer for the future will be far more net neutral than anything else. Yeah, of course, this uh, net neutrality doesn't come with the technology. It comes only with the usage. Yes. So the basic infrastructure itself is never decisive or biased. It's how people use it that makes it uh, differently. Mm -hmm. So otherwise, uh, ISRO is uh, committed to bringing in new technology and then enhancing the capabilities in all these areas, whether it's communication, navigation, or earth observation, and also bringing in the faster mode of disseminating the information. So today, one of the things that we are also looking at is for space-based information system for decentralized planning, mm -hmm. where the actual planning could be done right at the Sarpanch village, village panchayat level, and then they are being given access to this uh, process of planning. Mm -hmm. And we are trying to roll out this in a very big manner so that all the Sarpanch have access to the information and then asset creation. So this is an endless possibility mm -hmm. and it's really the our government's endeavor to make sure that these technologies are practically brought to use so that mm -hmm. the flagship programs roll out quickly, they can monitor the progress and then they can disseminate even mm -hmm. the activity. So now since this uh, basically involves sharing of technology, uh, be it uh, within government or even outside, uh, are there going to be sufficient safeguards as well so that this uh, uh, proprietary information is not uh, misused uh, either commercially or strategically? No, definitely what you say has a point, but uh, at the same time, some to certain extent we have to forego this because if you try to bring in too many restrictions, mm -hmm. the actual rolling out takes much longer time and then mm -hmm. maybe sometimes it becomes obsolete by the time you start using it. Okay, but there will be a National Space Act. Yeah, there will be, actually we are working on certain activities on this and bringing out uh, the information dissemination, how it can be done, how it should be mm -hmm. scoped. This is also in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll take a short break at this point, sir, and then we'll talk about uh, the ISRO's uh, other projects as well, uh, you know, its commercial expansion and the scope uh, for uh, exploring space uh, the way 
it's meant to be as well. We're taking a short break on candid conversation at this point. Stay tuned for more with Mr. Kiran Kumar. भारत संचार निगम लिमिटेड यानी BSNL, BSNL ने अपनी मोबाइल सेवा पर देश भर में रोमिंग फ्री कर दी है पूरी फैमिली के रिश्तों को जोड़ दिया है अब ज्यादा सिम कार्ड और ज्यादा हैंडसेट से मिला छुटकारा इनकमिंग के चलते देश भर में रोमिंग फ्री जितनी चाहे बातें करो वन नेशन वन नंबर टू ज्वाइन बी एस एन एल डायल टोल फ्री नंबर वन एट डबल जीरो वन एट जीरो वन फाइव जीरो थ्री बी एस एन एल हिंदुस्तान बोल रहा है सरिता जी इन दिनों आप अपने खान पान का ध्यान तो रखती हैं ना अरे ये क्या भोजन में साधारण नमक आयोडीन युक्त नमक का इस्तेमाल करें आपके शरीर में आयोडीन की कमी से आपका शिशु शारीरिक और मानसिक रूप से कमजोर हो सकता है आयोडीन नमक इन सारी परेशानियों से आपको बचा सकता है ये नमक बाजार में आसानी से उपलब्ध है बच्चों को हंसता खेलता बचपन दें अपनी संतान का भविष्य सवारे सवारे जिंदगी चुटकी भर नमक आयोडीन नमक खास चीजें हों या इन्वेस्टमेंट अलग अलग जगहों पर रखने में ही समझदारी है इसीलिए म्यूचुअल फंड्स या आपके पैसों को अलग अलग जगहों पर इन्वेस्ट कर मार्केट के रिस्क को कम करते हैं म्यूचुअल फंड सेविंग का नया तरीका म्यूचुअल फंड निवेश बाजार जोखिमों के अधीन है योजना ऐसी जुड़े सभी दस्तावेजों को ध्यान ऐसी पढ़े बढ़ा कदम बढ़ा कदम तेरे साथ साथ तेरा देश बढ़ रहा है बढ़ा कदम ये तेरा योगदान है जो विश्व में नाम है ये देश तेरे टैक्स से छू रहा आसमां है तेरे टैक्स से ही चलेगा ये वतन बढ़ा कदम आप कदम बढ़ाइए अपना आय कर देकर अपना एडवांस टैक्स अदा करें इस महीने की पंद्रह तारीख तक आयकर विभाग द्वारा जारी Welcome back. You're with Candid Conversation, and we're in conversation with the Department of Space uh, Secretary and ISRO Chairman A. S. Kiran Kumar. Sir, uh, before we took the break, we were talking about uh, how ISRO's technology can be used for the common man. But let's talk about ISRO now in terms of what it is doing to revolutionise uh, India's position in the community of nations as far as exploration and the use of space is concerned, and especially commercially, because that's uh, on a completely different level now. from what uh, we could even compare with 5 years ago yeah one of the things is see as the usage of uh, the space technology and its tools keeps increasing one of the requirement is we need more cap capacity and capability mm -hmm. so today when we started we had maybe a few launch uh, gap between the launches was few years now it has come down to five four to five launches per year and very soon we want to target almost 10 launches per year mm -hmm. and even then we will be in addition we adding launch facilities launch as well capabilities we and by reducing the time between the launches and mm -hmm. then bringing in more satellite technology etc but then to ha make this happen we need within the country a tremendous capability increase so we need more and more of the subsystems to be sourced from the industry today we are working on mechanisms by which we can probably engage a complete uh, industry consortium to do the work of like pslv launch from end to end right up to the integration in shri harikota so unless we bring in tremendous capability within the country's industry our ability to provide greater infrastructure for usage in the country will be limited how so far is the scope so if we look at uh, it 5 years down the line in terms of isro which is already earning a lot of money from uh, foreign uh, space agencies and other uh, entities that are interested in space now uh, the private sector is also being given a lot of space uh, what uh, is likely to be india's share in the market say in 5 years it's a 200 billion dollar industry i believe yeah of course uh, this how much will be our share will purely depend on how well we are able to bring in the industry capacity in the usage that's why one other thing we are trying to look at is whether we can maybe 3 to 4 years down the line have an industrial consortium in the india actually doing the entire launch vehicle 
integration and launching at Sri Harikota. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of thing we are working on. Mm -hmm. If such a thing happens, then the today's tremendous opportunity that is available both for low Earth orbiting satellite putting into orbit and also geostationary satellite being put into orbit like our GSLV Mark II and later Mark III. Yes. This uh, is going to, this is a tremendous opportunity at this point because globally the space is, space commerce is taking off. People are talking of building hundreds of satellites and then launching them in a year. Mm -hmm. So both in terms of the Indian industry's opportunity as well as uh, the industry's opportunity to service India as well as abroad, there is a tremendous scope. So we are trying to work and then bring in a environment where some of the technology what we have developed, we will make it accessible to the Indian industry. They can supply not only to the ISRO's program, but also to international programs. So how much of this has uh, really to do with, uh, with what is ISRO's USP really in among all the previous space agencies that uh, it can make uh, something in billions what uh, may, you know others uh, charge to make in billions? Yeah, one of the key things in this is the kind of dedicated effort that the ISRO team puts in and also the teamwork it does. The primary reason why ISRO has been able to do is the end goal of that is very clear. End goal of ISRO is to bring in this technology for societal benefit. Mm -hmm. So when you are looking at a program where at the end of the day whatever work you have done actually benefits the common man in their daily lives. So it is one of the tremendous uh, boost in the working environment for the people. And second thing of course is in comparison with the developed nations, the cost at which uh, the human services talent is available is significantly lower. And would you say that it was the Bangalyan which was the eye opener as far as this aspect is concerned for the world? No, actually, uh, while Mangalyan brought in a lot of visibility globally, mm -hmm. but all the space agencies and the various forums did know that uh, India is one of the space agencies which has been working all along for uh, bringing in this technology for societal benefits. And everywhere, ISRO is recognized as the number one applicant mm -hmm. who has brought in tremendous uh, capabilities of space technology for Which is why we're working with NASA as well. Or NASA wants to work with us, and we are yeah. uh, having a joint uh, venture for NISAR. Yeah. By so this one, of course, is uh, much more happened after the Chandrayaan mission, where the two of the NASA payloads were put on the Chandrayaan orbiter, and then the finding of water on the moon surface was one of the key things which changed. And then our own ability to put uh, synthetic aperture radar, RISAT, when we launched in 2013, <coughs> 2012, for example, that is when uh, the NASA's uh, approach changed. And then now we are working on a very new concept, this uh, NISR is a you know, concept, first of its kind, which is going to be attempted, and it's going to bring in tremendous capability, both for us and to the global community, in terms of synthetic aperture radar usage. In 2021 is the expected launch of the satellite, and this will give us, for example, ability to study the change on the surface of Earth to the tune of <laughs> few centimeters which will give a tremendous advantage for studying the earthquake and deformations on the surface and then bringing in higher ability to understand the earthquake phenomena. That is one of the things. And for us, it is also going to provide biomass estimation and also our agricultural products. Uh, Would it be possible to uh, predict earthquakes? No, it's not. P uh, prediction is still a distance away, but what this gives us tremendous opportunity because very frequently you are able to make the surface change studies, hmm. then you can correlate a lot of things and then it will lead to a future and better understanding and maybe better predictability in the future. But initially it is going to provide a tremendous information for R&D on hmm. seismic studies. Apart from that for us it will also give us the biomass estimation and also for our crop yield estimations during the cloudy seasons and the monsoon seasons, hmm. ability to study the uh, various crop activities in the country. So that's why we are also very keen and globally it will provide better than five day revisit of the entire world at a very high resolutions. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be a tremendous capability. Could you also tell us uh, something a little bit more about uh, the other uh, exciting projects that ISRO has in terms of uh, say uh, the uh, regional uh, GPS uh, which will yeah. become operational next year? Yeah, see right now we have four of the satellites up in space and operating. And by March of 2016, we intend to complete the constellation of seven satellites. 
and later this seven satellite constellation will be further increased to maybe nine or eleven. But the basically, once the seven constellation, seven satellite constellation gets completed, we will have the ability to provide in our own independent geographic positioning system to 1,500 kilometers around our borders. So this is going to be a significant development for us. And in addition to that, today already we have safety of life assured positioning information, which makes use of uh, the American GPS system in the backdrop. But then our own uh, payloads, which are operating mm -hmm. today, and GSAT 15, which is going to go up next in November, will carry one more payload for Gagan. Okay. And with this, it will be dedicated operational service. Already, as you are aware, we are only the fourth country in the globe to provide such service for the aircraft. Yes. Today, both in terms of en route planning and then for precision landing, this is being used. And it has got tremendous applications in a host of other activities from railways, transport, and other sections. Then apart from that, uh, just this month on the 28th, we are going to launch AstroSat, mm -hmm. which is another science mission, which is also globally being looked at, looked up to, because it is in a single platform. So many telescopes operating from X-ray to UV is being provided in this. And uh, after that, we are working on Chandrayaan-2, which will have our own lander and rover an object which will be landed on the surface of the moon and make some in situ observation. Then beyond this, we are currently put study teams to look at what kind of future missions we should do, whether we should go for a Venus mission or a Ma another Mars mission or even asteroids and then what should be that. So the study teams are uh, looking at that. And one of the questions you were asking earlier is internationally, see our Mars mission, what it has done is it has in actually enthused so many of our neighboring countries, including UAE, et cetera, who are now looking for uh, working with us to uh, on their new uh, Mars programs. Okay. See, some of the space agencies want to start their space program with Mars mission today. Mm. Would there be a timeline to this, sir, a definite timeline uh, to uh, these projects, uh, say the uh, exploration, uh, explorative mission to Venus, or uh, uh, you said Chandrayaan 2, there is already a timeline there. Yeah, and what would be the purpose? Because Chandrayaan 1 is credited with the uh, you know, discovery of uh, frozen water. Uh, what are the possibilities with Chandrayaan 2? No, Chandrayaan 2 is like we are building a newer capability of putting a lander onto the surface of Moon, which requires actually throttleable engine development, which uh, allows slow descent of an object onto the surface of the Moon. And then on the surface itself, there are a number of experiments which are being conducted. Mm -hmm. And then in Chandrayaan 2, we are going to actually make much more detailed studies on the surface of uh, Moon, where the water, actually the various processes that are supposed to be happening, how intense they are, and what regions are more active. So we'll be uh, carrying forward our studies from the previous Chandrayaan mission. And then the other planetary missions, what we are talking about, of course, each one of them will have their own timeline. For example, you are aware that Mars every two and a half to three years is the interval where the most optimum right. timeline comes. Yes. So in each of these missions, there are certain specific timelines we have to look at. But once we firm up our action plan, then we will work towards those programs. All right, and, and so what about the uh, reusable uh, space launch vehicle? That is something uh, that is, uh, I think, more immediate uh, than uh, the others. Yeah, no, yeah. while that is a requirement, that is, you have to keep reducing the cost of access to space because mm -hmm. you need to put more and more observation system, more and more communication system. So the cost of launching is always an issue. So okay. you need to progressively work towards reducing the cost of access to launch. And in that context only, all these reusable launch vehicle, technology demonstrator program, etc. we are working on. But we are still a, f a fair distance away from bringing in this new access, low cost access. Mm -hmm. It's a continuous process and we are only in the first uh, steps of that. Okay. We are working on a demonstrator experiment which will bring in a one-sixth model, the scale model of mm -hmm. uh, the wing body. So the work is in progress on that. Since cost is a factor in all this, uh, it's an expensive business uh, exploring space. Uh, are you also looking at an alternate revenue stream? You have the commercial revenue stream uh, already where we've launched uh, more than 40 satellites for uh, other space agencies uh, uh, using the PSLV. Uh, but technology sharing, are you looking at that as a revenue stream as well? Yeah, in fact, uh, while we bring in many of these capabilities, we have got a lot of spin-off technologies which are coming. 
and uh, these spin-off technologies we are now making it available to the Indian industry and this is a continuous process not only in one is a spin-off technology where it has got direct use but there are also many capabilities which will have indirect use when you bring in for example lightweight materials mm -hmm. so these lightweight materials can act as artificial limbs for the human beings mm -hmm. and uh, many of the pumps that are designed they can have different functionalities yes. so we are trying to uh, make establish a mechanism where we can bring out our uh, technologies make it accessible to the indian industry mm -hmm. we are reaching out to the industry through our uh, portals industry portals of the various mm -hmm. uh, centers that we have so this is a continuous process but we need to accelerate many of them and we also need to accelerate the way we uh, reach out to the public and the students and then enthuse in them the work on the space technology and the tremendous opportunity that is available for the student community to do their own innovative uh, solutions. Mm -hmm. So we are looking at ways and means of uh, bringing in these new capabilities and enthusiasm. Working with the, the, together with the with HR the, ministry. Yes. And so, uh, if I could ask you, uh, because we are also looking to collaborate with our neighbors, there's a SARC satellite which the PM had proposed. Uh, how is the progress on that? Are all uh, the SARC neighbors on board as far as that project is concerned? Yeah, basically everybody has agreed, yes, it's a good idea. It's a tremendous uh, opportunity to interlink the various states and then contribute in terms of disaster monitoring, mm -hmm. meteorology, and also bringing in the fruits of remote sensing on this thing. And currently the interactions are there uh, with the uh, various ministries of these uh, states and uh, we are working towards bringing out the satellite by end of next year. Well, that sounds great, sir. Uh, they say that uh, uh, sky is the limit uh, for most uh, things, but as far as ISRO is concerned, I believe uh, sky is just the beginning. There are so many galaxies to explore and a ga galaxy of possibilities to explore, and we hope uh, that uh, ISRO in the coming years does great things for the nation. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks a lot. lot.